Welcome back to the channel where you're going to be talking about the six point greats epic comeback. So with any good foundation of an engine build, we needed an engine block. The one that I had was bored 20 over and due to the scuffing from the bent rods, uh, we could no longer use it. So we reached out to Hamilton cams out down there in Texas and we got one of their 300 MPA high test blocks. Um, this block comes with a couple sweet upgrades. First one being 14 mil mains, 14 mil head studs. So we're gonna be able to get a much better clamping force on this. It comes with uh, all seven cam bushings in there. So we're gonna be able to run a much stronger cam. Um, and we sent it to the machine shop, had them bore it out to 6.7, so 4.210 bore. Uh, had them service it, check the line hone, and uh, we were ready to go. Uh, to couple with that, we have our power driven diesel 6.7 OEM replacement crank. We went ahead and just welded an OEM gear on there and it was ready to go. Bolting that crankshaft into the bottom of the engine block, we have a set of 12 valve, yes, 12 valve, 14 millimeter ARP main studs. What's nice about these 12 valve ones is they're pretty cheap to get. They're a 14 mil. And from everything we saw with the 12 millimeter uh, main studs in the original engine, I think this will be a good upgrade and hold the power. Uh, moving right along with that, we reached out to Waggler Competition Products. Uh, they're out in the Midwest and we got a set of the Waggler Street Fighters. These are their as forged billet rods. Um, they come in, as far as I know, just standard length for your 5967. Uh, they also come in Cummins, or sorry, uh, Duramax and Power Strokes as well. What we like about these, it's obviously an I-beam rod. It's got a good bushing on it. Uh, it gets the same rod dowling caps like their big fancy rods do. And it comes with the ARP L19 half inch bolts. They rate these to 1500 rear wheel horsepower. I can promise you one thing, with enough nitrous, we're gonna test that threshold there. Um, moving into up the engine, we have our Hamilton tool steel tappets. Uh, we went with the tool steel tappets because we are running a Hamilton steel cam due to the fact that we have the seven bushings in there, we might as well run the steel cam. It is a stronger cam. We went ahead and went with a 207, 220 cam. Uh, from talking with Hamilton, talking with the bosses, obviously Will and Todd, and then talking with the cylinder head, uh, the people that made the cylinder head, this seemed to be the best cam for the job. Uh, going on the ends of those rods is your average run of the mill Molly cast QSB 6.7 piston. As you can see here, Meyer took the liberty of already fly cutting. Uh, we calculated the clearance for the cam uh, with valve depth, piston protrusion, the height of the, or sorry, the thickness of the cylinder or head gasket. And this is what we came up with. So we fly cut these to accept a 1.38 valve. Uh, from there, obviously, look no further than to fluid dampener. Now this is a carryover part from the 6.8 uh, meltdown. Um, so we're gonna be reusing this guy. Again, fluid dampener, they're always taking care of us, making sure our vibrations are to a minimum. Uh, for the cylinder head, it's really heavy. I didn't feel like dragging it over here, but we do have a Freedom Racing Engines or a Fleece Performance Engineering Stage 2 uh, 6.7 head. It does come with the oversized manly intake and manly exhaust valves. It also comes with thread and freeze plugs, which as you saw in our uh, teardown video, that was one of the issues that we had with the milkshake was that freeze plug had popped out. So we got that issue taken care of. And it also is coming with the Freedom Racing Engines valve springs and the Freedom Racing Engines tool steel locks and retainers. Really excited about that head. Uh, they, I ordered it during a Black Friday deal, came fire ringed, came with a new firing head gasket uh, and really excited to put that to the test. They said I should really notice the difference when it comes to spool up. Um, and then we are also going to be testing our own branded 4.5K RPM springs, so 4,500 RPM springs. Um, Will and Todd were trying to figure out a way to test these and what a better way than to put them in an engine that's probably gonna sled pull and see 5,000 plus RPM. So I'm actually really excited. If it's anything like our push rods, I have a feeling they're gonna be a, a knockout. Um, leading right along to our push rods. 
Uh, again, this is another carryover. Uh, we're going to be reusing our power driven diesel stage two 24 valve uh, push rods. Again, I've taken our stage ones well past 1200 horsepower. I'm really excited to see what these will do. Um, again, you know, we sell these, we sell our springs, all these parts that you see here, we can pretty much get you. Um, to go along with our valve train, the only upgrade we do have some Manton trunnions on the way to go in the rocker arms they're not here yet or else i'd show them to you guys uh, we do have our fleece performance engineering valve bridges that helps what happens is the factory ones like to spread and they'll actually wear the guides these billet ones don't allow that to happen again a carryover part uh, moving right along uh, for bearings we didn't go crazy these are just a molly clevite uh, h series bearing so these are their coated performance bearings, nothing fancy. Uh, and then for the mains, same thing, Molly H bearings. I've used these in previous race truck engines on street trucks. They seem to hold up great. Always happy to put Molly Clevite bearings in there. Um, strapping the head to the engine block, uh, IFG. Got a set up with a set of their 14 millimeter head studs. Uh, these should, I mean, take anything I can throw at it. Now that we figured out how the head's getting clamped down, we're gonna get right into fueling. Obviously we reached out to our friends at Dynamite Diesel Products. Uh, being that I am a common rail guy, going to the dark side, I do have to uh, kind of outsource a little bit. Uh, I have, obviously we're using a fleece dual pump kit, just like we had before. Um, and we're gonna be using two Dynamite 12 millimeter Stroker CP3s based on six, seven pumps should be enough fuel for over 2000 horsepower um, coupled that with ddp's in-house uh, modded fuel rail this is now a 67 fuel rail has a little bit more volume should be able to support a little bit more power um, and then all i did was basically polished it and then clear coated it to make it look pretty um, going along with the rail uh, we have a set of ddp super mental 325s so these are a 325 horsepower based injector so your 04 and a half to 07 spray pattern um, and then they open these up to well over our goal um, i think they said these are good to about 2400 horsepower if i'm not mistaken and then they were nice enough to even include a spare in case we have any issues and we're far away they'll be able to get us taken care of um, and then not pictured, we have an Air Dog 200 that I ran all year last year. And then I went ahead and purchased an Air Dog 165. Uh, two 12 mil pumps on an Air Dog 200, I really don't think it's going to keep up. It had a really hard time doing a stock pump and a 12 mil uh, right around the 13, 1400 horse mark. So went ahead and stepped it up. Um, <clears throat> and then lastly, everybody always wants to know about turbos. So this is my big single. The covers at Powder Coat just brought it there. Um, but this is a GT50. That's right, a Garrett ball bearing turbocharger. Really excited to try out the Garretts. Todd has been, since, I honestly, since Power Driven, I became a customer. When I bought my first Borg Warner, he always told me to go Garrett. And uh, finally swallowed my pride. And we'll see if it's, if we're good so this, again this is a gt50 base charger so not as big as the ones that are on uh, the ucc truck but it is a 85 millimeter compressor wheel uh, i don't remember off the top of my head but the back side's really large as well and it does come with a bigger turbine this is a 99 91 turbine versus an s400 big turbine would be a 96 88 so we picked up some turbine flow uh, this compressor is wheel is supposed to be a little bit more efficient than the Borg Warner 488. So this should be capable of more power. Coupled that with a undivided T6 housing, uh, a Steed Speed Comp T6 and a wastegate, we are going to add two stages of progressive nitrous, a spool jet, and then you hear a lot of the gas car guys talk about the scramble button. We're gonna have a nitrous scramble button, basically a 250 thousandths nitrous solenoid fed by its own dedicated bottle in case I'm losing or I really want to, you know, maybe pass Todd or Will at the drag strip. I'll have that extra nitrous there because we certainly have the fuel to burn it. This charger, I'm hoping, hoping 
1400 horsepower on fuel only is kind of what uh jose at force induction spec this charger at i don't know i've never used it and not a lot of people spend the money on the garrets uh, i know on a borg warner that would be a really tough feat so i have no idea and then we're hoping to spray it well past 1600 horsepower um, so again rods rated for 1500 hamilton rates this block at around 1500 horse so we do have a recipe for a potential uh spectacle for you guys hopefully not um but yeah that's kind of what we're doing with the build the only other things we got going on we have dustin will connor and nate all of our transmission guys uh, they're going to go through the 48 that we just pulled out check it make sure it's good uh, phil from dpc got our quad disc converter or not restalled but refreshed for us so a huge shout out to phil they always take care of us whether it's a regular truck to a high horsepower race truck like every time they always are there for us um, and then uh, just getting the chassis ready doing some suspension upgrades uh, that way it's ready for the sled ready for some potential drag radial launches and uh, really the goals we got a bunch of competitions we're trying to hit um, I really want to hit that 1500 horsepower mark um, and at the end of the day, I still want to leave license plates on this thing and still be able to take, you know, my family to the grocery store or to a restaurant or something. Obviously, this truck's days of daily driving are probably numbered. Um, <clears throat> the injectors, once you get to that size, start to become an issue. Uh, we had to run a pretty healthy dose of piston to wall because of the cast pistons. So it's not going to be as friendly to daily drive as it used to be. But eventually you just got to hang up your hat but i do want this to stay a dedicated street truck so hopefully you guys like what you see we got a lot of great products some of them are our own private branded products all every single product here that i have on this table we can get for you um and yeah we're kind of dipping our head into this common rail thing the highest i'd ever been was in this 05 when we did over 1300 horsepower I don't know where it'll go from here. Really excited and uh, hopefully you guys like the journey. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. We appreciate the feedback guys. Have a good one.